Hello and welcome to Cloud Learners Journey Part 1 of Azure Administrator Associate Real Exam Questions and Answers with Explanations and References, which you can find in the description. So let's get started. Don't forget to subscribe to our Cloud Learners Journey YouTube channel to help you pass the AZ104 exam and become an Azure Administrator Associate. Question number one. You have an Azure Virtual Machine that has a single data disk. You have been tasked with attaching this data disk to another Azure VM. You need to make sure that your strategy allows for the virtual machines to be offline for the least amount of time possible. Which of the following is the action you should take first? And the options are A. Stop the VM that includes the data disk B. Stop the VM that the data disk must be attached to C. Detach the data disk D. Delete the VM that includes the data disk And the correct option is Stop the VM that includes the data disk And the reason for this option is Stop the VM first so that disk data is not corrupted it gets corrupted if service is writing data while you detach. Next question number two. You create an Azure storage account named Contoso Storage. You plan to create a file share named data. Users need to map a drive to the data file share from home computers that run Windows 10. Which outbound port should you open between the home computers and the data file share? And the options are A80. B443, C445, D3389. And the corrupt option is C445. And the reason is server message block SMB is used to connect to an Azure file share over the internet. The SMB protocol requires TCP port 445 to be open. And the incorrect answers are port 80 is required for HTTP to a web server. Port 443 is required for HTTPS to a web server. Port 3389 is required for remote desktop protocol connections. Next question number three. You have an Azure subscription that contains a web app named Web App 1. You need to add a custom domain named www.contoso.com to Web App 1. What should you do first? And the options are A. Create a DNS record. B. Add a connection string. C. Upload a certificate. D. Stop web app 1. And the correct option is create a DNS record. You can use either a C name record or a A record to map a custom DNS name to app service. Next, question number 4. You plan to create the Azure web apps shown in the following table. First column has the name and the second column is the runtime stack. Web 1 has the runtime stack of .NET Core 3.1. Web App 2 has the runtime stack of ASP.NET V 4.8. Web App 3 has the runtime stack of PHP 7.3. Web App 4 has the runtime stack of Ruby 2.6. What is the minimum number of app service plans you should create for the web apps? And the options are A1. B2, C3, D4. And the correct option is B2. And the reason is .NET Core supports Windows and Linux. ASP.NET supports Windows only. PHP supports Windows and Linux. Ruby, Linux only. Also, you can't use Windows and Linux apps in the same app service plan because when you create a new app service plan, you have to choose the operating system type. You can't mix Windows and Linux apps in the same app service plan. So you need two app service plans. Next, question number five. You have an Azure subscription. You have 100 Azure virtual machines. You need to quickly identify underutilized virtual machines that can have their service style change it to a less expensive offering. Which blade should you use? The options are A. Monitor B. Advisor C. Metrics D. Customer Insights And the correct option is B. Advisor Advisor helps you optimize and reduce your overall Azure spend by identifying idle and underutilized resources. 
you can get cost recommendations from the cost tab on the advisor dashboard next question number six you have the azure resources shown on the following exhibit it has a tenant root group management group subscription resource group and the virtual machine you plan to track resource usage and prevent the deletion of resources to which resources can you apply locks and tags here is like the answers locks for the locks there are different options rg1 and vm1 only sub1 and rg1 only sub sub1 rg1 and vm1 only mg1 sub1 rg1 and vm1 only so like that you can see the below options and also you see the tags and the correct options are for the locks we need to have subscription resource group and the virtual machine which is a resource and for the tags we need the same subscription resource group and the resource so for the locks you can lock a subscription resource group or resource to prevent other users in your organization from accidentally deleting or modifying critical resources for the tags you apply tags your resources resource groups and the subscription question number seven your company has several departments each department has a number of virtual machines the company has an azure subscription that contains a resource group named rg1 all vms are located in rg1 you want to associate each vm with its respective department what should you do and the options are create azure management groups for each department create b create a resource group for each department c assign tags to the virtual machines d modify the settings of the virtual machines and the correct option is c assign tags to the virtual machines and the reason is tags are metadata elements that you apply to your azure resources they are key value pairs that help you identify resources based on settings that are relevant to your organization next question number eight you have an azure subscription named subscription one you create an azure storage account named contest storage and then you create a file share named data which unc path should you include in a script that reference files from the data file share to answer drag the appropriate values to the correct targets and here the bottom you see the values and also the answer area so the correct options are contest storage file code dot windows dot net and the data first we have to select the name of the account so the name of the account here is the storage so which means uh, we have to use the name uh, which is a contest of storage and then we are creating a file here we are considering as a file so it it would be file.core.windows.net and which has the name data so at the end you will see the data next question number nine you have an azure subscription that contains a user named user one you need to ensure that user one can deploy virtual machines and manage virtual networks the solution must use the principle of least privilege which role based access control role should you assign to users one and the options are a owner b virtual machine contributor c contributor d virtual machine administrator and the correct option is c contributor and the reason here is contributor grants full access to manage all resources but doesn't allow you to assign roles in azure rollback and the incorrect answers are owners which is a grant full access to manage all resources including the ability to assign roles in the azure rollback virtual machine contributor which lets you manage virtual machines but not access to them and not the virtual network or storage account they are connected to virtual machine administrator login which views virtual machines in the portal and login as administrator next question number 10 you have an azure subscription that contains a resource group named test rg you use test rg to validate an azure deployment test rg contains the following resources it has the name type and the description 
for VM1, which is a virtual machine. And the description has VM1 is running and configured to backup to Vault1 daily. And the resource Vault1, which is the type is recovery services vault. And the description is Vault1 includes all backups of VM1. And the resource name VNet1, we see. And you need to delete test RJ. What should you do first? And the options are A, modify the backup configurations of VM1 and modify the resource lock type of VNet1. B, remove the resource lock from VNet1 and delete all data in Vault1. Turn off VM1 and remove the resource lock from VNet1. D, turn off VM1 and delete all data in Vault1. When you delete a resource group, all of its resources are also deleted. Deleting a resource group deletes all of its templates, deployments, and currently stored operations. And the correct option is turn off VM1 and remove the resource lock from VNet1. The lock overrides any permissions the user might have. You can't delete a vault that contains backup data. Once backup data is deleted, it will go into the soft delete state. So you have to remove the lock in order to delete the VNet and delete the backups in order to delete the vault. Next, question number 11. You have an Azure subscription that is used by four departments in your company. The subscription contains 10 resource groups. Each department uses resources in several resource groups. You need to send a report to finance department. The report must detail the cost for each department. Which three actions should you perform in sequence? Here the actions are assign a tag to each resource group, assign a tag to each resource, download the usage report from the cost analysis blade, filter the view by tag, open the resource cost blade of each resource group. And the correct answers are assign a tag to each resource is from the cost analysis blade, filter the view by tag. And the third one is download the usage report. Tags are metadata elements that you apply to your Azure resources. They are key value pairs that help you identify resources based on settings that are relevant to your organization. Resource tag supports all cost incurred services. Next question number 12. You have an Azure subscription named subscription one and an on-premises deployment of Microsoft System Center Service Manager. Subscription one contains a virtual machine named VM1. You need to ensure that an alert is set in Service Manager when the amount of available memory on VM1 is below 10%. What should you do first? And the options are create an automation runbook, B, deploy a function app, Deploy the IT service management con connector. We create a notification. And the correct option is deploy the IT service management connector, IT, which is an ITSM. So the reason is the ITSM connector uh, allows you to connect Azure and a supported IT service management, which is a product or a service, such as the Microsoft System Center Service Manager. With ITSMC, you can create work items in ITSM tool based on your Azure alerts, which can be um, metric alerts, activity log alerts, and log analytics alerts. Next, question number 13. You have an Azure Active Directory tenant named Adatum and an Azure subscription named Subscription 1. Adatum contains a group named developers. Subscription 1 contains a resource group named Dave. You need to provide the developers group with the ability to create Azure Logic apps in the Dave resource group. And the solution here is on subscription 1, you assign the Logic app operator role to the developers group. Does this meet the goal? And the options are A, S, B, no. And the correct option is B, no. You would need the Logic App contributor role. 
Here logic app operator lets you read, enable and disable logic apps but not edit or update them. Whereas logic app contributor lets you create and manage logic apps. Next question number 14. You have an Azure subscription named sub1 that contains the Azure resources shown in the following table. It has the name, resource name and the type RG1 storage1 and the VNet1. You assign an Azure policy that has the following settings. So it has the scope which is uh, on sub1. Exclusion is like a subscription RG1 and the VNet1. Policy definition which is append a tag and its value to resources. Policy enforcement is, an, an, is enabled. The tag name is tag4 and the tag value is the value4. You assign the tag to the resources as shown in the following table. It has the resource and the tag. For the sub1, the tag1 subscription, rg1, tag2 IT, storage1, tag3, value1, vnet1, tag3, value2. For each of the following statements, select yes if the statement is true, otherwise select no. So for the statement, rg1 has the tag2, IT, tag, assigned only. And the answer is yes, RG1 already exists. Policies cannot be applied to already created resources. If they would also need to apply, then remediation task is must. Next, storage one has the tag one, subscription, tag two, IT, tag three, value one, and tag four, value four, tags assigned. And the answer is no. Tags applied to the resource group or subscription are run are not inherited by the resources, although you can enable inheritance with Azure policy. So the storage one has tag three value one and the Azure policy will add tag four. Next, VNet one has the tag two IT and tag three value two attacks assigned only. And the answer is no. Tags applied to the resource group or subscription are not inherited by the resources. So, VNet1 doesn't have tag2. VNet1 has tag3 value2. VNet1 is excluded from the Azure policy. So, tag4 will not be added to VNet1. Next, question number 15. You have three offices and the Azure subscription that contains an Azure Active Directory tenant. You need to grant user management permissions to a local administrator in each office. What should you do? And the correct op and the options are Azure AD roles, administrative units, access packages in Azure AD entitlement management, the Azure resources. And the correct option is B administrative units. So administrative units restrict permissions in a role. To any portion of your organization that you define for example use administrative units to delegate the help desk administrator role to regional support specialists so they can manage users only in the region that they support so here we end with part one thank you for watching part one of azure administrator associate real exam questions and answers we hope you found it informative and helpful if you like the video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel for more related topics. We look forward to continuing the journey with you in next videos. Thank you.